Welcome to the conclusion of our four-part series investigating the Rayleigh Criterion. If you're just joining us now, the first video investigated what is the Rayleigh Criterion. We learned that light diffracts as it goes through the lens of your eye or the camera that you're trying to take a picture with. This diffraction causes an interference pattern that causes the light from different objects to interfere with each other and blur. They sort of blur into each other. The Rayleigh criterion itself gives us an angle at which the two different objects are so blurred together that you can't tell them apart. In the second video, we learned what it looks like when you can't resolve an object because its angular size is too small. We learned that the resolution of the camera or the retina in your eye is usually the limiting factor. But if you have a very high resolution sensor in your camera, you can actually run into the Rayleigh criterion based on the aperture of your lens. In the third video, we reviewed perspective and how the distance of the object causes its angular size to get smaller. And that in turn will feed back into that Rayleigh criterion and cause the object to become unresolvable. In this fourth and final video, we'll investigate the claim that the Rayleigh criterion explains why objects in the far distance disappear bottom first. Why do distant islands appear to sink into the ocean? Why do different ships seem to sail over a curve? Could it be due to the limited resolution caused by the Rayleigh criterion? Throughout the previous videos, we saw that the distance of an object can cause its angular size to shrink gets smaller and smaller as it moves into the distance, and that the diffraction limit causes these things to become blurry, no matter how good the resolution of your sensor might be. Beyond a certain limit, the object will become blurry and indistinct to where you can no longer make it out. What it will not do is cause objects to vanish. Objects do not simply vanish, they become unresolvable. And we've seen that unresolvable means they become blurry and indistinct. These objects do not appear to be blocked, not from the top, not from the sides, and certainly not from the bottom. They just become blurry. They blur together with their background. If the background is a blue sky, the object will blur into the blue sky. If the background is a green field, such as this, the object will blur into that green field. And finally, Diffraction and the Rayleigh criterion do not cause objects to change their shape. They cause objects to become unresolvable, meaning their shape becomes indistinct, but that will not compress or stretch or otherwise distort the object. It will simply make the object blurry in its natural size and shape. So that means when you see an object that appears to be blocked from the bottom up, maybe by the ocean, that is not the effect of the Rayleigh criterion. That is not the effect of diffraction. That would have to be explained by something else. And also, when you see an object that has been compressed or stretched or otherwise distorted, as you often see along the horizon, that is also something that is not related to diffraction. That could be related to a similar phenomenon called refraction but that is not caused by the diffraction of the light as it goes through the lens of your camera. That is what the Rayleigh criterion is. And the Rayleigh criterion does not cause distortion of images, let alone compression. Sometimes you'll hear the claim that the Rayleigh criterion causes the bottom of objects to become indistinct against the ground they are next to because the angle between the ground and that object is too small to resolve. That may sound plausible. But when we looked at the brick wall example, we saw that the angular size of the brick at the bottom is no smaller than the angular size of the brick at the very top. In fact, arranged like this, where we are standing near the bottom of the wall looking straight at it, it is the top brick that is the smallest of the set and therefore should become unresolved first, not the bottom brick at all. At the distances, where these angles are so small as to be near the Rayleigh criterion, the difference between alpha 1 and alpha 5 
is way too small to be relevant to the conversation anymore. Those angles are both so tiny that they become indistinguishable from each other at those distances. And that tells us conclusively that the Rayleigh criterion is not responsible for blurring out the bottom of an object before the top of the same object. Let me just wrap up with a summary of a few comments that I have seen repeatedly online that motivated me to make this video series, and hopefully you have learned the answers to these questions along with me. Question number one, does your curve calculator account for the Rayleigh criterion? Well, if you see anyone ask that question, I hope you now know that the correct answer is the Rayleigh criterion has nothing to do with curve calculations at all. So no, I don't use Rayleigh criterion in my curve calculator. That's not what it's for. Next, I continue to hear this one from time to time and it always makes me smile. Is this observation explained by the limitations of the human eye? After all, the Rayleigh criterion says that we can't resolve something below a particular angle. Well, what we saw from the equation was that the Rayleigh criterion depends on the size of your lens. So if you have an observation of a distant object that you cannot resolve with your current optical equipment, you can always get a bigger telescope to resolve that. And I really shouldn't have to point this out, but none of the observations that you look at on the internet are being limited by human vision. These are all taken through cameras, and the camera is not limited by human vision. And for our last question, is it possible that the objects disappearing bottom up is actually explained by this Rayleigh criterion? After all, the angle there at the bottom of the object is getting awfully small. Well, as we just saw, the Rayleigh criterion cannot explain the obstruction of objects nor the accentuated blurring of objects that we see near the horizon. When you do see an object that is either obstructed at the bottom or extra blurry at the bottom, you'll need a different explanation for those observations. And that's it for our video series on the Rayleigh Criterion. I look forward to seeing your comments down in the comment section. We can discuss them in further detail down there, and I'll happily make follow-up videos if anyone wants more information or more details about any step along this process.